Today's permaculture concept is all about comparing the system that we exist within right now, the industrial system, which is how humanity is currently set up, versus how nature functions. Understanding how these two systems differ gives us clues and insights into how we can actually go about changing the way that humans currently live right now so that we can have a much more positive existence on the planet. One of the paradigms that permaculture aims to change is this idea of how we coexist with our ecosystem. So if the existing paradigm right now is said very simply, how do we meet human needs? Then the permaculture paradigm aims to change that to how do we meet human needs while enhancing ecosystemic health? But before we can go there, we have to understand where we are right now. We basically have to diagnose the problem, diagnose the system that we live within. And so the system that we live within right now can be classified as the industrial system. And the industrial system is quantified and qualified as a linear system. And so if we think about the industrial system in terms of everything coming from a source, and specifically when we think about industrial society, this typically is mined either through oil and gas or physical uh, removal of the earth and mining for things like coal, um, metals and various other elements that we use in our day-to-day -day, uh, processes to basically make consumer based products but in the example in front of you right now we've got oil being extracted put into industrial agriculture um, and then from the production of industrial agriculture we wrap all of those industrial agricultural products up in more oil or plastic and then we send it off to market where a consumer purchases it um, and then once the consumer is done with whatever portion of it that they're going to use, the rest of it then gets sent to landfill or sink. And so it's a linear system in that it goes from one place all the way to another. Now, if this was a pinball machine, that would be akin to putting balls into the system and the balls falling straight out of the system as quickly as possible. But we all know that pinball is not about allowing the balls to actually go to sink. But this is essentially how the industrial system is set up. Now, linear systems can be characterized as being efficient, they're scalable, they're based on specialization, so each of the components in the system is hyper-specialized, they're fragile and maybe sometimes resilient, it depends on how much energy we're applying to the problem, and they're only as strong as their weakest link, which means that they're black swan prone. Now, if this is the first time you've heard about black swans, black swans are basically major events that are unpredictable, that are hyper rare, that cause a complete shift in the fundamental characteristics of humanity. This term was characterized by a gentleman named Nassim Taleb, who wrote a book called Anti-Fragile, as well as The Black Swan, and other incredible books, which I highly recommend. They're not easy reads, but they give enormous insight into how humanity and society is currently structured and some of the risks that we are prone to and how to benefit from those risks actually, not just understand the risks and take them, it's how to understand and quantify them so that you can better prepare yourself or hedge yourself against them. And so we could say that the industrial system now is hyper risky because any one of these components in this linear system breaks, it will cause an unraveling of the rest of the system. And so we don't want to build our lives around systems that are linear because they are black swan prone. So let's compare the industrial system, which is very linear and prone to black swans, to the ecological system, which is set up in a completely different way. So the ecological system is set up in a web or network. And in the image below, what you'll find is um, a representation of this web, which is similar to a ecosystem food web, which is on the right hand side. And webs are basically set up to be circular. And so the waste products of one resource become the feedstock for another. And in fact, the more diversity we have, the more connections we have within that web, the less of the energy that gets sent to sink. So in the same way that an industrial system needs a source of energy, our ecological system needs a source of energy as well, and that's the sun. So it's renewable. If the sun disappears, there's no point really thinking about that concept because everything else will just cease to exist. So we'll assume that the sun is going to be around for a while. So we have a source of energy, which is sun and minerals, that then gets sent into the actual uh, network or, or web of life. And that web of life tries to keep things in play as long as possible. So again, using the pinball machine analogy, 
this is a pinball where the ball stays in motion for a very long period of time and a small amount of energy is then lost to sink but it's not really actually lost because ecosystems have found ways to actually move those minerals back up into the ecosystem again into that web of life one of the best examples of this is actually the salmon so salmon are migratory animals they go out into the ocean they feed they get fat and then when they're done they go back upstream and with them they're carrying enormous amounts of nutrients so we can actually think about salmon as phosphorus and nitrogen pumps and they're just taking that energy from down in the system and they're bringing it back up into the system again this is one of the primary reasons why livestock are needed on farms Livestock can perform the same function as salmon in the macro ecosystem. So webs are very resilient, they're very effective. Um, and in fact, if we think about a fishing net as an example or an analogy to a web, you can lose 60 or 70% of the connections in a fishing net and it'll still catch fish. So this is one of the reasons that we've been able to assault the environment for so long. Um, and we're you know going through this massive extinction right now is that it's not necessarily a good thing that this extinction is occurring we have to stop it very soon otherwise we're going to be in big trouble but one of the reasons that the ecosystems around us have been able to take such an assault from us is that they're based in webs and so nature just kind of adapts and figures out other ways to keep that net together it self mends if you will and so the images at the bottom there, which are some of the most successful organisms on the planet, is the internet on the bottom left, mycelium, which will increase the surface area of a tree by up to 800 times, and then on the far right we've got the human brain, which is also a network or web. Um, and the human brain is interesting because it takes about the same amount of energy as a 90 watt incandescent light bulb, but it has the ability to design energy out of the system. The human brain is amazing and it's entirely based in networks and webs. So lastly, let's compare one more slide that really kind of gets to the heart of this issue. So in this slide, we've got a lot of information captured in a really small space and I'm comparing an immature ecosystem to a mature ecosystem. And so we could kind of say the industrial system is very immature. And what we're trying to do in permaculture is create a human system that supports us that mimics a mature ecosystem. So let's go through some of the characteristics of an immature ecosystem. So generally they have low diversity, they're based in annual plants, they're based in competition, they're based in parasitism, nutrient leakage, export, fast change and water export by drainage. I mean, this is perfectly described by a monoculture wheat or canola or corn crop. Okay, there's one type of diversity, corn or wheat. The plants have to be planted every single year, they're annual. They're based in competition, which is why we have to use herbicides on them. There's parasitism because pests are trying to come in and take them down, not because they hate us, but because they're trying to bring balance back to the system. It's unbalanced because there's only one species here. There's tons of nutrient leakage, which is why we have to bring in fertilizer all the time because it's constantly being exported, both from the crop itself, but because plants are not used to taking water soluble fertilizer. They're used to different nutrient pathways, which we'll talk about in another permaculture concept. They're based on fast change. So again, that annual cycle. And a lot of the water that hits these fields actually gets exported and is lost to sink, which is one of the main reasons that we have all these dead zones around the world. So these systems are fragile. They require high amounts of resources, which by the way is interesting because one calorie of food that comes out of the industrial system requires 10 calories of hydrocarbon to go into it. So if you are a coyote going out and trying to get all of your own food and you had to invest 10 of your own calories into the system to get one calorie out, you would starve to death. Now let's compare this to the mature ecosystem. So mature ecosystems are based in high diversity. So there's lots of different plants and animals. They're based in perennial plants, which means you plant them once and they come back again. The systems themselves are based in cooperation and mutualism. There's a lot of nutrient circulation moving around the system. So very little nutrient being lost. The systems themselves are based in on-site consumption and water export by evaporation instead of drainage. Now, when you compare this to the immature system, these systems are resilient, they have low resource use, and they're regenerative. And so if you had to define what permaculture is aiming to do, it's trying to mimic mature ecosystems that operate on solar energy that have all the characteristics that we've just described in order to create resilience and some insurance against some of these black swans that we were talking about earlier. Hopefully you found this interesting. 
Um, if you did, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the like button, it really helps the channel track. And I look forward to seeing you in one of the next concept videos. Thank you.